two, one. Welcome to the Factor GA podcast. Uh, delighted to be joined by former Cork senior footballer Paul Ixan, uh, former Down senior footballer Danny Hughes, and former Mead uh, senior footballer Joe Sheridan. Um, Danny, we'll come to you first, I suppose, because you've got the relief of being involved with an adult club team and getting back out on the pitch. I'd say there just may, must be such a relief. It is. Um, I suppose it's been... The longest of winters, it's been a year and a half where I, I, it's just been a very turbulent year and a half for, for sport, for the Gaelic Games, for life in general. So I think uh, when the light at the end of the tunnel is for us in the north that the vaccination programme was actually was particularly good. Um, and given the mess that we've, we found ourselves in as regards to infection rates, deaths and all the rest of it, the UK... Uh, government with um, you know they didn't get very much right but the vaccination program that's ro- been rolled out in the north here um, has been has been good um, so even you know I think it was over 65 in the south uh, getting vaccinations at the minute you know it's 35 to 40s at the minute that are getting their, their jobs here so it just shows you the disparity there um, uh, between between the vaccination program and you know it's brilliant to get it back out on the field. It's brilliant to get out and interacting with 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 uh, the boys. And I have to say, um, it's definitely everybody's got a bit of a lift around here, you know. Um, so it's, it's great to see, it really is. And Joe, um, I presume you're still playing um, a bit of club football, anyways, but. How are you feeling a minute as a player when you see the youths go back this week now and uh, adult club teams can't go back at all? Yeah, well, luckily enough for most people, I hung up the boots last year, so there'll be no football for me this year, so I'll be I'll be looking on, thankfully. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, it, it's great to see. I was just driving by the club pitch the other day and the American kids just out and about, and it's um, it's great and it's 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 long overdue and look, it's everyone knows what's happening and we've got to obviously look after each other. But it's just great for the kids. There's a lot of I'm involved with a, a club team down here as well, the League Belgian Town, and a lot of young lads. And you know, you're trying to keep them motivated and, and, and keep them going, and, and that's the most important thing. So if we can if we can do that, um, and sort of bring everyone along when we start reopening, that that's the most important thing. So it's uh it's great to see and hopefully the. The adult football will be back over the next couple of weeks as well and we'll um, start kicking with the ball again. And Paddy, as, as we were saying off air as well, I suppose the only thing is for the club teams that aren't back yet, it isn't really 100 miles away. So did you have something to look forward to? Oh, definitely. I think like it, it's, 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 I think it's a different mindset now compared to the earlier months, say January and February, where you know people hadn't a clue when there might be a GA season. But now, as I said, it's only a couple of weeks. Like So... And with the change of the weather and so on, and you know, people just look. It's naturally looking forward to the summer, like so. I just think it's, yeah, I think there's a different mindset now, and I think it's it's going to be great when it does get going, like because you're going to have a series of games, plenty of games over the summer months, like. And I think, irrespective of what that's in, I think that's what every player wants all the time, you know. So yeah, looking forward. And Danny, with the football as well, there was obviously Dublin and Monaghan breaking um the training breaches um and. When I suppose people seen the Dublin team training on the front of the Irish Independent, there was a bit of outrage. But what, what did you make, I suppose, of them two teams breaking the breaches? I I thought it was uh, I thought it was totally over the top. I think for for uh, you know when there's so much going on uh, north and south in Ireland, when there's so much going on in the world, to lead with a story about Dublin training. Uh, you know, a f- 10, what, 10, 12 players on their coaching guidance really uh, is a front page news. You know, I'm not into the hysterics of the 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 rules and the government legislation around COVID. I'm, I'm not into the hysterical stuff. And, uh, you know, in this day age of the click, the click cancel or, uh, you know, everything's cancelled over social media now and there's so much everybody, everybody has an opinion. Um, 
it's you know it's the criminalization of players and managers now um that i find uh very very frustrating you know you can't tell me dublin and Monaghan were the only teams that were training you can't say that there wasn't other club teams that were training um you know albeit you know we stuck to the protocol there's no point because i suppose i i'm a managed, managed, i'm not managing my own club parish team but um i'm managing a a, a team caswell who are looking to get back into senior football and i suppose from, from an outsider i'm still an outsider so I have a duty of care to their parish so that was that was front and center of my thinking about why why not to um uh, why not to train with them or organise training sessions? But from Dublin and Mullen's perspective, again, it was hysterical stuff, blown up by social media. Media always get on top of that now. And, uh, you know, for me, it's just, it's it's it's, uh, uh, it's a backstage, it's, it's a backstage story that I think uh, will obviously get onto the front page. But again, I would say it is being blown out of proportion, like most things. Uh, that happens nowadays. And as well with them, I suppose, um, breaking um, the guidelines, Joe, um, inter-county actions very close now to returning back um, with, I suppose, the league's coming back first around May 15th. But do you think the three weeks for inter-county teams is too short of a time to get up to the pitch of things? In a, an overall scheme, maybe if you were coming off a preseason, or just straight into a preseason in, into a league, you would say so. In normal times, you, three weeks would be quite tight. Usually, county teams would like to train three months to get fit, which is mayhem, but it, it, it probably reduces down and brings some sort of normality about how long it actually does take you to get fit. Um, to be honest, most teams have been training. I'd say Dublin Mon and the only ones that got caught. That's the problem. And it's, you know, I, I that's an overall view, but most lads would have met up or done, done something that they're doing a lot of work on their own also. So it's, um, yeah, it, it'd be interesting to see what type, what teams are actually hitting the ground running and, and who's done the work behind closed doors. And it's, um, it's look, it, it might go the opposite way and you'll, you'll have a lot of injuries over the first sort of maybe four to five weeks and lads will be having muscle injuries, which we're pro has probably been seen even last year. Um, a lot more lads would have been pulling up on, on muscle injuries, so uh, especially down in the club scene. But in the county scene, you're probably lads are well looked after, you know, that they don't know their own bodies. That it's sort of everything is to a fine, fine comb these days, you know. So it's literally uh, nothing's taken to chance. And um, you'd like to imagine that pretty much all the lads and the teams would be well prepared with all the backroom teams. And as well, I suppose, before we look at the um, championship draws and the league for this year, um, Paddy, Oshie McConville was talking today and he thinks, I suppose, that the GA have missed a bit of a, I suppose, not putting in the full championship system of the knockout system. He thinks if the elite status was there from the start that we could have a full championship um, with a backdoor and everything. Do you think there should have been one when there is one in the hurling and then there's not one in the football this year? Look, I think, I suppose, ideally, you'd think you'd like to have, if you're an inter-county player now or a manager, you'd like to have a backdoor, that second chance. As you've seen last year when a couple of big teams got caught, but I just think, in the day, I think my my club hat on now as well, like, there's, in the day, there's a window there to fit in the competition, like, and I think based on the window that's, the, 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 that's there to play the inter-county championship, I think that's the best that they could, look, they could have been totally radical and had maybe combined the league and championship together, which I think would have been brilliant is just to try it out and see what it'd be like. As some people have supported like, but I think based on yeah, on the window, I think, look, there just wasn't a, if they're going to play the National League as they've done, as they're going ahead of it, I don't think there's, there's a place to have the back door as well in the championship. Like, so I just think that's just, that's unfortunate the way it is. And I think if you look at it as a positive, it's, 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 it's great that they have a championship rather than nothing at all. Like, Exactly, and uh, the championship draws were uh, last week, and uh, Danny, a big draw for down against um, Johnny Gall in the first round. What are your thoughts on it? Ah, oh, but she down, she'd won it easy, I would think. Uh, but <laughs> no, I think anybody that pips down to beat Johnny Gall probably needs uh, 
needs to have a conversation with a psychiatrist because I think that Donegal will certainly be hurting um, after last year's Ulster final when Calvin, you could say that Calvin had a really good day, showed a lot of great spirit, uh, played with a lot of intensity and Donegal had an off day, uncharacteristically had an off day, missed chances. Um, you know, Mike, Mickey Murphy had a quiet game by his standards. Uh, Paddy McBrady coming back from injuries as well. Um, so, you know, the stars could align for Donegal this year if they're going to win a third All-Ireland title. I think their best chance is through that knockout structure. Um, the, the way I would look at that is there's about four to six teams in Ireland that could win an All-Ireland in Ulster, Throne and Donegal are two of those teams uh, within invariably within the four to six teams that uh, that that could win Sam Maguire. Dublin, you know, in a, in the old format and the normal format with a back door, Dublin would need to get beat really twice. Um, you could argue to win an All Ireland bar semi final and, and final, especially through a Super Eight structure. So their best chance, Donegal's best chance is is going right through. Um, and winning and also the title and then going on to uh, to win a semi final and final. So, you know, Don- Donegal haven't gone away. They're still a very very good side. Um, and they'll, you know, given that they were caught last year by Calvin, you could say uh, in in a lot of ways, they will not look further than down. Um, of course, you have a national league there to play a northern section of it, but it'll be a bit of a trial and error job with the national league. They'll want to. They'll, they'll want to win all their games, of course, but uh, the championship they'll have just they'll be just focusing on down because they'll know after the Calvin game last year that they'll they don't want to be complacent. So, you know, it's a very dangerous outfit. Down will be playing down of really nothing to lose, and could be in for a very very short championship season. Um, and obviously the back door not being in place, I I actually think that Jay had a great opportunity to be really radical. And have an open draw, even for a season, to see how it would have went. Um, and uh, obviously, they chose not to do that. So, um, but this was one year where they had that opportunity to do that. And as Paddy touched on, even the combination of league and championship football and a new structure, they they, they could have they could have had a bye ball this year to do that, but chose not to. And uh, but certainly, it's uh, it's a big big ask for down if the stake remain competitive and close in the game. Coming up to ten minutes to go, that's the best you can hope for, and and see where it takes you. But you, know, you know, Donegal, uh, you would have to say Donegal are overwhelming favourites. Uh, Throne, Calvin, I would expect Throne to to beat Calvin, believe it or not, because of new management and a bit of a bouncer and Armagh to come through on that side of the draw as well. So uh, yeah, it should be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Um, just on the other side of the draw, uh, Danny, I suppose. On this podcast, we did talk up Irma last year and it, it didn't come true for them in the end. But on the side of the draw they're in this year, if they don't get to an Ulster final this year, it's an underachievement of a year straight away, you'd have to say. Well, uh, Kieran McGinney, uh, who's a fantastic manager, great manager, uh, really iconic leader, iconic player. And, uh, you know, his mom management skills would be really, really good. I would, I would suppose be... Uh, party to that, knowing that you know Kieran McGinney and all of his squads uh, when he was managing Kildare and Armagh never had really players that were leaving. Uh, where you would you would have that within other county squads throughout the country, and Joe, I'm sure, party would probably be aware of even in their time players that came and go maybe had phones out with manager, but Kieran tends not to have that within the squad. So he he's had a he's had five years there now. Uh, probably six years of, of his involvement. Um, he'll be probably the longest serving manager, I think, this season coming in. So he, he knows what he has. Arma, I honestly thought that Arma would run Donegal close last year, and it was Calvin that actually went and, and, and done that. Uh, Arma have had a Kieran Donaghy, I think, and, and Potty will be well aware of what Kieran brings. He brings that, 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 that real bite to a game. He'll, he'll not. Uh, you know, Kieran Donnelly is a, a, a fantastic uh, person to have around the squad and to show them younger fellas and, and the boys and their fellas that really uh, they can they can 
uh, win. The problem Armagh has had in the past is that when it comes to big games, they haven't delivered. They've delivered when they're 10 points down. They've come back and they've very nearly, you know, won. But uh, they haven't delivered in big games. And I think, you know, maybe they need one or two extra players. But I think Donaghy will make a big difference in there. And there's a bit, been a big shake-up of, of McGinney's backroom team. So you would have to argue that if it's going to be any year to get to an Ulster final, it's going to be this year. But again, Monaghan there for Mana. Monaghan will be hurting again from Calvin's defeat, uh, Calvin's defeat of them last year. So, you know, Mana will be hurting there too, you know. So... Um, it'll be interesting, certainly will be. And Joe, with no back door for the teams in the Leinster Championship now this year, um, going on to see what Dublin have done in the last few years, how do them teams motivate themselves? Yeah, it's tough. Like, probably about 10 years ago, Leinster was up there as one of the most competitive provinces up there with Ulster. You know, Ulster at the minute is, is obviously the most competitive with some of the top teams in the country there. And, you know, it, it is tough. You look at, it, it, even you take fragments like Mead, who, who have always, you know, we're, we're always striving to, to win a uh, Leinster Championship every year. Like, the motivation for the lads to get up to play Dublin, you know, and we're lucky enough the way the draws come. If things go well, you stay away from Dublin and you're hoping to get to a Leinster final. But it, it's, it's, expectations then like you know do do we expect to beat Dublin in the Leinster final and until we start expecting and, and sort of having some sort of a chance against them you know it's going to be very hard for lads to you know get motivated in the current situation as well you know backdoor system it does give you that bit of a hope but the minute Leinster football now it's literally just everyone's watching Dublin and um, even the likes of Calair you know you would have liked to see with Jack O'Connor coming in them moving on they got some some players back and, and you would have liked to see them last year and maybe last year wasn't the perfect year for them coming in with, with, with the breakup of it with, with a new manager coming in you know it probably didn't help and you, you'd like to see some sort of a bounce back from them this year but it's it, it's going to be tough um for, for every team in in Leinster to be honest it's you could be in against Dublin who are one of the greatest teams ever played and you know it's when, when, when you look at Dublin compared to last year, will they be strong? It, it, it depends how De- Desi goes with them again. And it's like, I, I don't know if they'll be as good as they were last year. You know, um, I, I don't know what it is. I was only listening to uh, the radio the other day. And I can't remember who mentioned it, but it was literally, there was just something about the feeling that Dublin won't be as strong this year. I don't know what, I can't put my finger on it, but I sort of agreed with it. Um, and, it's literally, it's, uh, everyone's chasing them and it's how close can any team get to them and hopefully it'll be made in the Leinster final um, but it's it's going to be very hard to get anywhere near Dublin the way they're going at the minute. And Joe as well, their league games, uh, they'll have no home games this year. Do you think for the Leinster Championship to try and make it more competitive, it's vital to take the games, Dublin's games especially, outside of Crow Park? Oh, especially the, the the last couple of rounds, you know, you're looking at a quarter final, possibly not semi finals. I, I think even most players would prefer to play the games in in Co Park with a lens semi final, lens the final. You, they're usually double header, so it, it creates a bit of a buzz and gets fans and the crowds will arrive up. And, and I I think that's the best way for it. But definitely f- sort of sort of first round and quarter final, they should be they should be every team. You know, it, it's it's the same case for every every team there. So. It should be the same for Dublin. And, and, and if you look down the last number of years, any time that they have been taken out of Dublin, the first out of Crow Park in the first couple of rounds, teams have had a chance. You know, they, they might not have won, or in the end, they might have got bet by 16 points or 10 points. But there was an opportunity in the games where some of the low, you remember Longford, you know, Westmead, a few of them teams that would have had a chance against them that, you know, because they weren't in Dublin, in, in around their surroundings that they were comfortable with, it does sort of give every other team a bit of a chance and I'm not saying you're going to beat Dublin if you take them out because they're such a good team they can adapt as well so it's um, look yeah it, de- it definitely should be done um, and I, I'm not too sure of the venues just yet but you'd imagine that it's uh, the quarter final they have Wicklow or Wexford I think it is yeah so I imagine it, it's probably going to be away and, and then obviously um, Wexford are down in 
and Wicklow. So ho- hopefully, hopefully that'll be the case. And it's like the Dublin players, if you ask them, they, they, they don't mind traveling. Everyone has this thing in their heads that the Dublin boys just want to be stuck in Cole Park, but they, they want to be out and about and playing games out and, and they've no issue with that. And, um, you know, the top class players that can play anywhere, like most top class players, anyway. And Paddy, with the Munster Championship um, draw, I suppose, when you're looking at it with your Cork hat on, I suppose, Limerick or Waterford in the semi final, and then you see Kerry versus Clare, and the winner plays tip to draw definitely does favour Cork this year. It, yeah, I think it does. It, look, it does favour them, like, but at the end of the day, they'll, I suppose, learning from the, the championship last year, like, where they had a, a great performance and victory over Kerry, and then a few weeks later lost the tip, like, so I think that the challenge for Cork will be that, irrespective of who they play, end up playing, like, it's just bringing that performance to get the result, you know, and I suppose even like, Right, Limerick will be fancy maybe to beat Waterford like and they've made progress over the last couple of years and if I'm certainly right I think they beat Cork last year in the McGrath Cup you know as such I know you might say that's not important but still it's to Limerick it'll be, it would be important so do you know like so yes I think Cork is just you know they got to bring that consistency first in the league and from there then bring that to championship and I suppose their ultimate aim in the short term I suppose is getting back to the Munster final and they're getting Kerry and, and show that um you know, they've come further again from the progress they made last year. And yeah, with Kerry as well, I suppose, being beaten last year and everything that has went on, like you'd expect them to be very hungry for this as well. Oh, certainly. I think, like, you know, we mentioned you know, earlier on there off air, like about, about looking forward to the championship. And I, I think definitely, you know, when you've had a bad previous year and we can all relate to this as players, like if you've had a shocking defeat or a bad into the championship. And yeah, I think they'll be, you know, they were the team being tipped to to bring the greatest challenge to Dublin. Like so, they'll be they'll be savage, hungry, you know. And and um, it'll be interesting to see even how they respond, how they perform in the league, not mind the championship, you know. So um, but look, I suppose there's no point looking too far ahead. Like, but they'll but certainly if you know if if it ends up in a monster final back in Clarny for the first time in a couple of years, well then, you know, it'll be um, yeah, it'll just be I suppose the interesting to see how it plays out. And uh, and Danny, just the uh, last provincial um, championship. Uh, we'll touch on before we put be brave and uh, start some of our league predictions. But um, Mayo, after being beaten in the All Ireland final last year to Dublin, play Sligo first, and then the winners of that play Leitrim. Um, for Mayo now, with such a young team at the moment from all their retirements and in Division Two this year, like it is definitely a way for these Mayo players to build up confidence. Well, it looks like it looks like Mayo are going to have to rebuild. Um, you know, it's they're in. Uh, I, I hate that word transition because uh, you can use it for mostly every team. I think Down's been in transition for about a decade, and you know sometimes I think people use the transition word as an excuse um, to say rubbish. Um, so you know Mayo are certainly aren't there, um, but they're. They're young. Uh, they're a young team that are trying to uh, integrate these newer players that's coming to the fore. Um, and then, obviously, Aidan O'Shea's possible injury during the week um, is going to. You know, a lot's going to hinge on his availability for a league and championship. And if he is struggling to come back from from a knee injury. Um, and it's one of those where everybody's uh, crossing their fingers and hoping that it's not deserted SEL injury so or or anything close to that. So um, you know they've they've lost a few players like Keith Higgins um, as well that are that are, have been massive massive players for AO and you know players of a decade really uh, players that come around, along every every few generations. So um, you know James Horn. I think took Lex that last year as a bit of a gimme um, and tried to um, try to introduce new, newer players there and they're going to have to step up obviously the all Ireland final uh, showed us that you know there is potential there there's definitely potential in, in Mayo but they're si- you're still going back to the same players the, the, the Killians uh, um, uh, the Aidan O'Shea's uh, the Lee Kagans, you're still reliant on on those on those lads. Um, so, but listen, uh, Mayo, you would still fancy them to come through, given that their experience and given their history and everything else. And then Galway, 
they would be looking to make uh, make a better run for themselves this year as well. Porrick Joyce, you know, when, when he had such a good start to the National League campaign last last year, then the break happened and it seemed to completely break their momentum. They took a heavy, heavy defeat against Mayo and uh, that seemed to knock their confidence and, and any goodwill that was there seemed to be knocked out of the players and, and you know, I, I suppose a championship to forget then. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what goes on there. Um, so you you would still have to argue that Mayo are, are going to be favourites to come to come out of Connacht, and uh, you know, but but again, do I see them as uh, as contenders for Sam McGuire this year? Uh, you know, an All Ireland final, semi final, uh, just with the strength of Dublin at the minute, and then with the knowing the teams coming, I just think with the turnover of players, Mayo could be, you know, a Connacht fan could be as good as he gets, maybe for Mayo, you know. Yeah, um, the league is kicking off May 15, 16, I suppose. We'll look at that um, because it's obviously before the championship as well. But the way it's working this year is uh, north and south in all the divisions, uh, two groups of four. And then the top two go into the league semifinals, the bottom two go into the relegation league semifinals. Um, I'm going to get all your predictions of who's going to come out of each group. Um, but for... Uh, Division One South, Kerry, Galway, Roscommon, and Dublin. Um, Joe, I presume you'd have to think that Kerry and Dublin should get out of this group straightforward enough. Yeah, it, it tightens up the league pretty well when it, it's four teams, and you when you look at the, the teams that are in it, you know, Paul Roscommon could get a bit of a rude awakening in that South group, Kerry, Dublin, um, and Galway. You know, so look, you, you'd have to imagine it's going to be Kerry, Dublin. Um, who will be fighting out top honours there? I'd imagine um, just after it's going to be a lot of souls for Kerry after last year, and they'll obviously have to try and pull together and get the confidence back into the squad. I heard, heard there was a lot of noise there and there about management and what was going to go on. So it's uh, it's how they come out of last year's championship and and and, and see how how they perform. But yeah, I, I can't see anyone apart from Dublin um, coming out of that. Um, just from after K- Kerry sort of disaster last year, um, like Galway, if they can get Damien Comer back, you know he was a big loss for them last year, and he's that sort of their leader along with Shane Walsh. So if they can get him back fit um, and, and driving things on, they they could cause a, a small bit of an upset, but um, it would be a big shock if it's not Kerry at all. Yeah, Paddy, I presume you're along the similar lines, but the only thing I suppose that you might take in for consideration here is that Carrier Dublin probably won't be at full throttle for this group. They, they won't, but I suppose but every team you could say won't be at full throttle and I think whereas going back to a normal National League season where the more successful teams might be coming off of a, a team holiday or a shorter pre-season compared to other counties and where you'd see where Dublin might get caught in the, in the Oberon Cup or a for early on league game, they might be put to the pin of their collar they might necessarily lose whereas but I just think now I think well, it's just a short championship season and I think that even with the like I know Dublin won't take too much notice of the media but even with the hysterics of the weeks ago I think look they'll be you know they'll be going out similar to Kerry with, like with their underperformance last year or deemed underperformance that I think both those teams will be going out to send out a message um, in the earlier no they might still be experimenting in regards to players in different positions but as a collective I think they'll be going out definitely to put a marker down for the rest of the year, you know, because it's such a shorter season compared to the, the normal, so what is it, February to February to August or September, you know? Yeah, and Danny, I presume you're similar here of the two teams that will progress to the lads. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose from Russ Gomez's perspective, you know, when you're in, you're in the group of death there, really, with the other three teams, and Galway, arguably for me, would have probably one of the best footballers in Ireland in Shane, in Shane Walsh but as, as the other guys will tell you if you're totally reliant nearly on, on one player which they seem to be in Walsh up front with Comer, in Comer's absence you know they really need Comer back and back firing and all f- f- uh, cylinders to, for them to make an impact um, Kerry in Dublin uh, Kerry last year you would have to say that the it was, it's not the defeat to Cork. I think Kerry and Cork have always historically played out very, very close games. It was the manner in which Kerry were beaten 
um, when you look at the talent that they have uh, at their disposal, and that, and I mean no disrespect to Cork, but when you look at Clifford, when you look at uh, O'Shea, when you look at uh, O'Brien, when you look at what they have in the middle of the field, uh, Kerry, you know, you would have been looking to Kerry to be contesting an All Ireland final, arguably, and uh, the manner in which they were beaten there. Uh, Left a lot of questions. Um, I'm certain that it obviously caused uh, a significant stir within the kingdom. But I do think that there's fundamentally something wrong with within the management there. Um, and Peter Keane is certainly going to be under pressure. I think the fact that Kieran Donaghy has been poached up to Armagh uh, when you know that bait uh, was lacking in Kerry last year. Uh, I th- I for me, that's a bit astonishing, you know, um, especially when Kerry's living or when Kieran's living down in, in, in Turley. So, I, you know, there's some, something fundamentally not right. And yes, although the rumours that you hear about players' meetings and player demands and stuff may have been way off, but I'm certain, I'm probably certain that, you know, for players, uh, it's not always the management's fault. When, when teams are beaten and the guys will tell you that it just comes down to a bad day in many instances. But Kerry haven't really been themselves, um, I would feel, under, under Keane. Um, and they're nearly searching for a way to play instead of, in my mind, going and playing the way Kerry should play. And they've historically played. I still think there's a place for that. And, and Dublin seem to get that mix right. And there's no reason why Kerry can't do that either, you know. Um, so, yes, you would expect there, uh, Kerry and uh, Dublin to come through. But, uh, you know, Galway is also uh, in with a shout because uh, if things aren't right in Kerry, that'll be very, very evident in the first couple of league games. And the other group then in Division 1 North, it's an all-North uh, group. And fascinating in one aspect, um, Joe, I suppose, when you see Kieran Donaghy coming into Irma, Donny Buckley coming into Monaghan, and I suppose... I think everyone all around the country is really excited for what this Tyrone team has to offer and the change of styles. Yeah, it's 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 going to be a fair bit of clipping and scalping in this group. Um, you know, there been no love lost with a lot of the teams that play each other pretty much every year and probably a couple of times a year. So uh, they'll be pretty f- familiar with each other. Um, like you, you, you can't really look past Donegal and, and Tyrone probably is the two leaders of the group. Um Monon, when you when you look, Banty will have Evan and and try and get Evan behind him to sort of have a point say he's under a bit of pressure in in Monon to, to be successful and, and get something from the team. But it, it's it's gonna be tough. I I think Amar would probably be just out of their depth a wee bit. As Danny was saying earlier on, you know, they're just they, they always seem to get to a level and you know Kieran McGinney there a great great man and it's I think they're just lacking something and maybe a player like Kieran as a leader on the team to drive, drive the team on in, in sort of in the bigger games and, and, and maybe, you know, some of the younger lads another year might help them along, but they're just they're missing it. Probably just a bit of class just to get them to that next level to compete against the likes of Ron Donegal. Donegal, from last year, like, they played a lot of games and extra time and, one thing I did know is even with Michael Murphy, and look, you, you can't knock the man, but he just looked a wee bit tired. You know, he, he's been playing since he was 17. He's dragging that team through championship games for the last 10 years. And it's it was the first time I seen him in that Cavan game. He just, it was a couple of minutes ago, and he, he just looked, you know, as if the sort of the energy had gone out of him. And look, that m- might be harsh, but that's just what I was, I'd was i seen on the day. And, and hopefully he'll be rejuvenated. He's, he's still a good few years to play. So, if he can come back fresh and, and, and the younger players can drive things on with Donegal, you know, it, it's going to be quite interesting, in, especially in the first couple of rounds of the league because most of the Northern teams, Danny and Lowe, like, will start a league well. They're very good in the league. They're very consistent. And, you know, them four teams will, will probably be do, do that as well. So it's going to be a lot tighter than, I think, the Southern group. But it's um, I probably can see their own coming through on it. And uh, Paddy as well, do you think with a lot of these teams potentially meeting each other in championship that we might see some sort of shadow boxing throughout nearly, I suppose, most of the divisions? I think there, there might be a small... Well, I suppose for Division 1 teams, 
you said it might be a bit, a bit more shadow boxing, but only in relation maybe holding back maybe you know some tacticals that tacticals um, uh, things they might want to use in championship or maybe a player in a certain position or whatever or particularly maybe a key player who might be a risk of injury or whatever maybe but like I think but I think the top teams there again similar to my reason for maybe seeing Got- Kerry and Dublin doing well in the other the other side of the of the group I just feel they they want to do well like because it's just a short run into championship you know and I just feel the stronger teams then based on that like if the better teams are bringing the right attitude and the right preparation well then I still think like right if Tyrone and Igalo they might hold back something, but they're going to be hell bent and going out to win these matches and, and put a marker down for the for, for the championship, and um and I think they have to I think even in respect of who they're playing, I think you need to bring the because for even for your own preparation, because you only have so many games to get ready to, you know it's been such a long year now since or a long time since a lot of these guys played any form of of um competitive football like so these games are very important irrespective of result or who you're playing Do you know so yeah so based on that. I expect Tyrone and um, Danny Gall to come out of it. Yeah, and Danny, with it being an all Ulster group, a, a lot of people would be along the lines of the Tyrone excitement. But even for Danny Gall, Oren McNeilish coming back is a huge boost for them as well. Oren McNe- Or McNeilish has the potential to be one of the best players in Ireland. Um, you know, his he's such a silky player. He's uh, he's a phenomenal uh, ball winner. Um, and you know he can take scores uh, goal on points so it's great to see him back uh, he had taken a bit of time out and he seems to be one of these free spirited players uh, not unlike Jamie Clark Armas Jamie Clark where he really play, you know he doesn't like the rigidness or to be tied down in any one position on the field he tends to pop up everywhere but it's fantastic to see him back and certainly you know it'll take a certain amount of pressure off Mickey Murphy as, as Joe said rightly you know Mickey Murphy you know, if, you, if you're talking about a player of the last 20 years, my God, Mickey Murphy would be in that conversation because he's been, you know, he's, as Joe said, rightly said, he's carried him through championships, carried him into an all Ireland final and, and, and won. So it uh, dragged him to an all Ireland final in 2014 as well. So, you know, Mickey Murphy just needs a bit of support. And some of them younger players coming through in Donegal are, are, are very, very good. So Donegal are going to be there alongside, obviously, Tyrone, and they're going to be a bounce. You know, people will look to see how Tyrone were going to play. You know, I wouldn't expect I wouldn't expect this to be an overnight sea change from from Tyrone's management. At the end of the day, Logan and uh, Doher will be pragmatic, um, so they they will understand that you know they're offensive. If they're going to go more offensive than than Mickey Hart had, it's going to have to evolve rather than totally change. And uh, you know, as as, as I suppose Armagh will be testament to, Armagh will be a much more purist team. So they'll go forward and they'll go forward. And what has let down Armagh in the past has been the defence, you know, the absence around centre half back and full back of a real steady influencer. Akir McGinney, I suppose, as Joe said, in, in a way, they are missing that type of player, one or two players to add to their squad. So Armagh will be. Uh, Arma will be disappointed with the structure, I would think, because I know from my own experience, you know, it was great to get out of Ulster football. It was great to get down south and play teams. And in the south, you had teams that were a lot more purist um, and, you know, weren't as defensively minded throughout the years. So, uh, you know, it'll be an interesting group. But as the guy said rightly, um, I don't see anybody else other than Donegal and Tyrone. Monaghan are just aging. Conor McManus, there's only so much that that man can do as well. And the problem has been that if you tie down Conor McManus, you tie down Monaghan. And and Bondi's certainly going to... Uh, Bondi's a job in his hands. He was a real job in his hands there. And uh, last year, you know, the, the good feeling from uh, first year back in the management firm will have totally dissipated after that result they had last year in the first round. But Mullen or Agent, and uh, I think they're they're going to struggle uh, in that in that group this year. Um, but certainly, don't go on strong for me. And the Division Two North, um, Mayo, Down, Mead, and Westmead, and I suppose the other teams. Um, Joe, looking here at Mayo, Mead, Westmead, and Down, they probably will take 
some sort of belief that Mayo early on at the start of most seasons can be vulnerable and that can be when to get them. Yeah, it's um it's a bit more open, I think, this group. Um and Mayo obviously would be favourites going in, obviously come down from division one. So it's um it's probably not pressure, but they'll they'll be expect a lot of expectation on Mayo to win, uh, win this group. So it's um, you know, I I can't see like ho- hopefully Mead will start off well, and I'm sure Andy will have them you know well tuned, and and he'll see this as a chance to try and get back to Division One, um, after the way things had went last year, you know. So it was probably a learning curve for the Mead boys last year being Division One. Um, they were unlucky not to win a few games uh, on another day. There was. Was only a couple of points across the board in most of the games that they played. So, if we can we can build on that and, and get some momentum going into the league straight away, and obviously the game for them will be the Mayo game that they'll be they'll be focusing on to try and get some sort of result out of it. But um, look, you, you you can't take away obviously down in Westmead um, on any day that you know that they, they could beat Mead. Never mind anyone else, you know, because we that's you know sometimes we take the teams that we're supposed to beat. The likes of Westmead before, you no know, disrespect to them that will go out and end up lo- lo- dropping points against them, you know. So it's it's um it's it's gonna be interesting. Um it depends, as Danny was saying, how Aiden O'Shea will be. I think he got good news regarding the injury. So it's whether he's gonna be available for the first couple of rounds of the league anyway. So if you know it, it'll give probably the younger lads a bit of a chance to step up and, and stake a claim for a championship position anyway. So it's um Look, as a mean man, I'm, I'm hoping that we we can we can push on and and show a good account of ourselves and and, and get back to Division One football. But it's it's going to be tough against a very strong uh, Mayo team. And Paddy, the great thing about the teams trying to get promoted is usually in the league you have the teams who are happy to almost finish mid table and secure their status, but. You can't really do that in the groups, I suppose, with the bottom two teams going into the rele- relegation semi-finals, and anything can really happen from there. It can, like, and I suppose it's just as you mentioned that I suppose the one, I suppose I think I would disagree regards the league is where they have these games that might or might not be played based on, you know, like you say, the two teams get to the league final if I'm right, and then if they're both out in the first round of the championship, their game won't be played. Is that my right in saying that? Yeah. Like, so, so, like to me, I, I just think that kind of if might or might not playing a game look they should have had a one way or the other like you know that kind of because I just think it makes a bit of a the value is the, the league in a way like but I suppose yeah the way the structure is now look I think yeah every game is look again every game is just so competitive like and I think then and as I said no one want to get relegated look at all those teams there like they'll have they'd all have ambitions like at the, you're starting off in a group of four you'll have ambitions of you know if we win our first game you know this can lead to getting promoted to division one like which is look sure that that's if you want to be potentially challenging for honours you know top honours like that's or be the best you can be we'll say that's where you you need to be like or want to be you know so um yeah I just think it's and I think yeah because of this, the structure of it like initially you I think everyone will be looking forward to it because you're going I think you are you will get some very good games and and, and they're all come close over a space a couple of weeks like so um yeah it's going to be interesting and as I said rather than having a dead rubber at the end of I'd say at the last round or whatever like there's always going to be something at stake like and and um yeah, that'll make it interesting, and, and um, yeah, I look forward to it. And uh, Danny as well, like, do you think Down can do something in this group, I suppose? Coming up from Division 3 for them will be a, a, a big jump. Um, I suppose, in a way, Paul, uh, in, a, in a way, do, do I think there's there's two aspects to that question. Uh, do I think Down can do something? I actually believe that Down can do something, because... Um, Going back to the Fermanagh game in the championship last year, in the second half they played well, and the first half against Cavan they were, you know, they downplayed arguably the best half of football in, in ten years as a team. Uh, pace was their strength, uh, ability, skills. They showed everything in that first half, and the second half was the down that we've seen at their worst for in this last ten years and. You know, they lost battles around the middle, couldn't get the ball, were pinned in and, and were leaky at the back. And, you know, for seven points out at half time to, to, to lose them before. So, you know, it was a significant turnaround there. And uh, Calvin thoroughly deserved it on, on their second half performance. But down or building, they're building under a really strong, 
good, experienced manager in Paddy Talley. Um, so I do. I would be hopeful that you know, given that Mayo never really started a league that well, they could they could uh, they could beat Mayo, albeit down have lost their 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 home advantage because of uh, of, of COVID uh, uh, of the COVID um, infringement. So you know, but arguably you could you could catch Mayo. Westmeath is a very winnable game, and Meath is a winnable game. And and let's be honest about it. Uh, when when any team, if if they're looking to challenge for provincial honours or an All Iron title at this month, they need to be in the first division. And the younger lads that have come into the panels need to be experienced in first division football because um, it's even more likely this year. I would think that you're going to have a provincial winner like Cavan, like Tipperary next next year. I think teams will be much more wary of those type of games and. Uh, you know, you could you could say that Cork were perhaps complacent going into that Tipperary match, and the stars aligned nearly on on that particular occasion. They gave Tipperary the win, and you know credit credit to them. But uh, from, you know, when we see that it is a knockout championship as well, arguably when we're starting to go into the second, third, and fourth division teams, you know, if you've three games to really measure your season here, so if you know. If you get relegated or you're stuck in a relegation battle, and then you're put out of a first round of the championship, it's going to be, it's going to a lot, a lot of questions are going to be asked internally and externally within that squad and within that management group and within that county. So the leagues have taken importance throughout uh, this last three years, throughout the decade. You could say national leagues have taken on increased importance because in a lot of counties, it's the best way to measure success now. Because the championship has become, you know, you could narrow it down to four to six teams to to do anything in an all Ireland, as opposed to probably Joe and Potty would would see it, and 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 we played in the last decade uh, in the noughties, and you know you had a wider sphere of teams there that could win a provincial championship and arguably win an all Ireland. Um, so when when you see it now in the Dublin dominance there and and I suppose the lack of diversity in an all Ireland final. You know, a, a league now is an important uh, bar now to measure success for a lot of teams and a lot of management. So, you know, I see the league as, as hugely important and uh, it's going to be hugely important for a lot of teams there. But uh, can Down do something? Absolutely. It could be their best chance of, of getting a wee bit of success and progress this year. And if we were to look at the other um, group in Division 2, South uh, Cork, Kildare, Leash and Clare. Um, Cork will be looking here of, of a huge opportunity um, to get out of this group. And like as you mentioned earlier, Joe, with Kildare, like there has been potential there, but they haven't really delivered under Jack O'Connor yet. And Leash and Clare will get some confidence um, of taking second spot and progressing into a semi final as well. Yeah, definitely. You know, obviously after Cork last year, their comms will be up. You'd imagine they'll try and bring that into this year and sort of go again and try and get back to Division One football. And um, it, it's definitely not beyond them. Um, obviously, with the players that they brought through last year, it was um, you know it, it was it was a shock. But it, obviously, for Cork boys, they, they expect that as probably knows right well beating Kerry is, is the the main goal probably for them every year. And you know them Cork boys will expect that, and they'll only gain confidence after sort of probably a bad past three or four years for them and getting down to division three. So they'll be later back to back to division two and, and, and sort of pushing it and probably be favourites for this group. So um Claire, you know, as I said, they're probably just I don't know what it was. They looked very slow and sluggish last year. You know, we, we put five goals past them and they started well, but after that they, they just sort of bottomed out and um they've probably done that over the last number of years. You know, there's something when the going gets tough, they sort of they, they disappear, and they do have some of the main players back. But you know, it, it, it I'm I'm always expecting something to go wrong for them, and and that seems to be the case. They get to so far, and hopefully, look, Jack O'Connor might bring that out with them this year. And it, it it's it, look, we'll have to wait and see. But uh, you're looking at then your likes of Leash and Claire that they'll try and take a scalp, possibly. Off Claire, you know Claire, they've they've been very consistent over the last couple of years. 
uh, through championship and even in the league, you know. So they're um, they'll expect to take points off someone. Leash, you know, I, I think they're going to struggle big time. You know, I, I can't see them beating any of the teams there at the minute. Um, struggling for players, young, the really very little coming through, unfortunately, and it's um, it, it could be a, a tough couple of weeks for them over the next couple of weeks when the league starts. In Cork as well, um, as we mentioned, looking at the Munster Championship draw, um, party there, um, Kieran Sheehan, he'll have to be a player. I'd say Cork will be looking at getting back if he has recovered from his injury um, before missing last year's championship because he's the, definitely the type of player in that forward line that you think Cork could definitely do it. Um, I suppose certainly, but I suppose right see, I suppose Kieran adding would be that for the experience. Like I think he touched on some glads that really related to maybe the Armagh team lacking that for the experience in the, in, in the back lane. I just think overall, I think Kieran's... Um, experience would bring a lot like you know and it's been back to the day when they when they um were beaten by Tipperary you know with you know things like that that's where you need your I suppose your experienced players to stand up you know and um yeah but I think for Kieran look he's had his um he's had his injuries like he'd been disappointed last year didn't go as planned like so I think for now he's so focused just is, is getting back um you know to full fitness and then get back playing like but I think it's, it's, it's too early yet to predict you know when so you know when someone's come back from injury like you know, mm-hmm. he's, potent, he's potential to make a big impact, but it's um, one step at a time, like, you know, get back playing and training regularly and, and go from there, like, you know, but I suppose at Cork as well, they look at, they brought through a lot of younger players, young players through last year, like, who've another, they're another year older this year, I know doubt they might have the management their eyes on one or two more younger players who've been through as well this year, like, so I think it's 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 a it's a collective improvement in Cork rather than, um, rather than relying on any one individual. And uh, then Division 3 North, um, Danny, uh, Longford, Derry, Fermanagh and Cavan. Um, and everyone will be looking at Cavan to back up their progress. But the only thing is, like when you do look back to their successful championship, when they played a, a team like Antrim in the championship, they were expected to beat. They weren't overly impressive. And it's, I don't know, is it just a thing with Cavan that they just about get past the lesser teams and I suppose to progress to the next level here they have to get out of Division 3 Oh well, without a doubt and they will probably be frustrated you know originally when we suppose had conversations last year um, I I assumed because they had a lot of people that had left the show, really talented player, players Conor Moida guys like that you know guys that have been nominated for All-Stars had left the squad I assumed that there was something probably going on there, something something that wasn't right, possibly within the within the setup, and then they turned around and went when they lost the final. So I'm actually questioning why you actually took me onto this podcast to put my expertise. I'm not sure how much of an expert I I can be here, but but Calvin, they would really look to be out of that. As I said, I go back to the fundamentals of where you know, Calvin were when it came to the semi final uh, against Dublin and, you know, invariably the game was uh, the game was over at half time and uh, Calvin have great heart and great spirit, but you know, you can see that Calvin when, when nothing's expected of them, Calvin could well spring a surprise. But when, when the expectation is there, Calvin probably you know, scrape through games. So, you know, you would you would have to say in the athletic grounds, a couple of games that they did have against Down and then in the Ulster final was in the athletic grounds. Um, you know, a tight net field, um what the uh, I think Danny's gone there, but um if we're just to look at that group, I suppose Joe, um You'd expect Cavan to come out, I suppose, on top in first place. But like the other teams, Longford, Derry, and Fermanagh, they'll all look, I suppose, at coming second or or even causing a shock against Cavan. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, it, it's it's like the last group. It's it's pretty open from the from, from Cavan down after Cav- Cavan's successful year last year. You know, they, they'll obviously try to get back to Division Two, and and that'd be their main goal. So. I think Mickey Graham, you know, he's shown how shrewd he is as a manager. He, he's well able to get his, his team prepared and actually well up for a task when you look at the championship last year, you know. So if, if 
if we can bring that into league, I can't really see any of the other teams, you know, mate, they'll compete, but what, will they beat them? I can't see them beating them. Um, all going well with the Cavan spot, obviously. If they're missing a couple of players, then they sort of come back down and, and they lose a bit of confidence. But if, if they've everyone on board, I, I'd imagine that they'll, they'll top the group. And, you know, the other three teams, Derry, you're probably going to see Derry probably following up Cavan. They're probably the team that will probably get the closest to Cavan. Um, you know, depending on, I'm not too sure where Cavan play Derry, but whoever the game is, you know, if Derry are at home, they, they, they're very hard to be usually at home in the league. And, um, I've had experience of that over the years with them. So it's um, it's up, it's Cavan's to lose, but it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if Derry give him a, a good tight game. And, you know, the likes of Man or Longford will probably be just trying to get get points on the board and, and try and get confidence going into the championship. Um, and obviously trying not to get relegated down to Division 4, which, which is a bit of a disaster for teams playing Division 4 because you're trying to progress. The last thing you need is, is playing the bottom in the lower division in in the league. So um, these teams will, it, it, every team has a different goal and a, a different target for the for the championship in the league. And I'd say Longford for Man will be saying, let's try not to get to get relegated. And I, I'd imagine Cavan will win it. And the other group, like a bit similar to Division Three North, but in Division Three South here, Poddy, Limerick, Tip, Wicklow, and Offaly, and like. A lot of people will be looking at Tip and like any of the other three teams could get that second place. Oh, certainly. I, I like. I think you know we we look at the different motivations or the different goals. Even as Joe touched there, like you look at say Limerick who've come up from Division Four last year. You know, and and um, you know, obviously they took they were beating in extra time to Tipperary in the championship. Like they see this is a great opportunity. Like you know the best opportunity they've had for a good number of years, like that they can get a run here again and, and, and actually get promoted to division two, which would look would be a great achievement, you know, and uh, building on last year. But likewise, you've Wicklow come, who've made progress and um even awfully there as well. It looked a lot, yeah. Like and I suppose even Tipperary, like Tipperary will see like that they'd want to prove like, you know, you know, it's obviously a brilliant for them winning the Munster Championship, you know, and that like but they'll still they'd have maybe long-term plans like for them to make progress or to be competing in Munster Finals every year. They certainly can't be in Division 3, you know. So, um, yeah, I just think for like for those four counties back training at the moment, you know, you know, you're, it's, it's the same. You're starting with any team, like you're kind of saying, what chances you are? And you're, I think they're probably, you know, there's a great mood in those camps at the moment because they just see it like, you know, that we've a, we've park championship aside in the short term over the next couple of weeks. Like, we've a, we've a chance definitely certainly of, um, of very promoted, like, and, I suppose it'll come down to particularly maybe the first round of games and see who, see who gets the positive result first, like, you know, but yeah, it'll be interesting. That's a great point you make there, Paddy, like, um, but Joe as well, like for a lot of these teams in Division 3, 4, and even some teams in Division 2, this could be their only chance of competing and winning a trophy. So that's why for a lot of these teams, the league is going to be bigger for them than the championship. Absolutely, and it, it's all about motivation and who, who's in the right space at the right time. And and because it's just such a short season, you know, a couple of niggle injuries at the beginning of the year could hamper a team's ambitions to win the, win the league and compete. And and, and look, we all, we all know if you're competing at top level, you've got you've got to have a bit of luck as well to, to win and and bring everyone along. And everyone sort of has to go to plan. Um, and it's probably going to be who. And sort of reduce down the injuries at the first outset for the first couple of matches, and then roll all that and and who takes in the the, the, the new structure into into place as quick as possible. Because some teams will use it as an excuse. Some teams will actually take it on board and say, right, this is a great opportunity. The game into us. We'll be prepared from the outset. And it, it, it's all a mindset. And and you can go one way or the other. And it, it's all about who who takes it the ball by the horns from from the very first league game and um. You won't you won't be long about seeing who who what teams are up for from the first games on. And then finally, just division four, uh, division four in North, uh, Paddy. When you're looking at the managers here, and I suppose trainers that are involved, it's creating a bit of a buzz, I suppose, with division four, like Loud, Mickey Hart, and Gavin Dev and Gavin Devlin, Antrim, Enda McGinley, and Stephen O'Neill, um, Sligo, Paul Durkin, and Tony McEntee, and then Leitrim, uh, Terry Highland as well. Yeah, look, I, I think naturally, again, you know, when you get a such experienced um, background staff or managers on board, 
naturally creates a bit of hope with the team and but also it probably ends up the biggest challenge in division four is getting all your players to commit particularly because maybe the reason you're down there is maybe you've had some unsuccessful seasons poor results and certain players then mightn't make the commitment and sometimes that can be some of your very talented players so like but i suppose the challenge for a lot of these counties is as much as they'll be delighted with who they have maybe trained their team as they'll see all their other teams in the division also strong management teams and you know so like it's I, yeah, I just think it's it's I think it's good for the game, isn't it? You know, it's it's it, you know it's going to bring the potential to bring on all those teams. Like, but the bottom line is only they're going to them can progress. Like, so um, it's looking at the, that group at the moment. It's it's very hard to make a call of who's actually going to um, come out of that group. And and I think that's irrespective of this year. We've groups of four or, or other years when you've you've, you've your seven teams or whatever or eight teams. It's always been division four is always a minefield. Like, and I think it's about just trying to get win one or two or three of your first couple of games and you're just you're, you're just creating momentum and I think from there then it's the team that gets the momentum then they're the invariably team that can get out like and um, yeah and I think I was only thinking that well ago just thinking back to the division that, that division three south again like where like it's just whoever wins the first couple of games it just it gets that momentum on board like and and um, yeah so like it's it'll be I suppose it creates a bit more hype to division four and um, yeah as I said um, I look forward to see that goes and then the um, final division four south here, Waterford, Carlo, Wexford. Um, and we were saying Wexford could potentially be playing Dublin. They're going to be looking at, I suppose, getting out of this group, um, especially as well, Joe. Yeah, it's a, in, in the, probably the strongest team in, in it, to be fair. Carlo, Waterford probably haven't had the success or... Uh-oh momentum over the last couple of years that they would have liked. Um okay, it's very hard playing division four. It you've already touched on it's it could be a lack of players, it could be players stepping away, players getting the motivation to actually um not really seeing any light at the end of the tunnel training for nine months of the year um and and getting beaten maybe after the your after your back door first game and you're you're gone after June or July, you know. So it's very hard to motivate teams and, and get players ready to go for um you know when they know probably their fate from here on in already for the championship you know as you as you were saying um Wexford play Dublin you know and it, it's it, it's gonna be you know a long couple of months well depends maybe probably about six or eight weeks from championship so mm-hmm. you're probably looking at they're looking at straight at that and some players will probably step away so they might not even have their full range of the players Going into league and into championship, so it'll be interesting to see how, how they get on and and how players, you know, how motivated they are to compete and um in such a short season and, and a lack of opportunity after after you you're knocked out or you get beaten in the first round. Yeah, definitely. But um, some great games in the league. So look forward to um, we'll be back again with another preview before round one of the league. Um, but that's just our overview.